Hey, how you doing? Owen here again from ActiSense, technical support engineer and training coordinator. Welcome again to our NMEA 2000 networking series. This is episode two. I'll be talking about some of the minimum network requirements that are required to start up a NEMA 2000 network and as well what those network limitations are. So the, the first thing that you need to get started with any NEMA 2000 network is power. You need a power, power insertion point at however you, you want to provide that power to the network. There are several ways to do that which I'll cover in later episodes. You need a minimum two devices. So without, because without two devices, you don't really have a network. You don't have anything, you don't have any exchange of communications, exchange of information happening. So there's no network there. To be able to connect those devices to the network, each device must have its own T piece. Again, I'm not going to go into any great detail about anything that I'm mentioning here, like what, the, what those devices are, what those products are, such as T pieces. That'll all be covered in later episodes. On the, at the very extremities of the network, the, f the, far the furthest end, you must have termination resistors to, to maintain the signal in integrity. Some common phrases that you might hear being thrown around when talking about NEMA 2000 is a backbone, for example. The backbone is the main trunking of cable that goes through the network that the T-piece is all joined to and the, the devices connect into, which leads us on to the next commonly used phrase, which is drop, or an instrument drop. And that and that's refers to the length of cable that goes from a T-piece to a NEMA 2000 device. And NEMA 2000 devices transmit messages known as PGNs, which stands for parameter group number. And all you need to know about that is just that it's a NEMA 2000 message. It's how they exchange their information. As I mentioned, there are some limitations to NEMA 2000. I'll be putting a graphic for those limitations into the downloadable PDF. If you want to gain access to that PDF, please join our mailing list. I'll be providing a link with the video, and I'll also be chucking up a graphic to show you what those limitations are at the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and share our videos around. We'd love to spread the message and help people to understand NEMA 2000 a bit better. And I'll see you in episode three, where I will introduce some starter kits that you may be interested in to get you up and running with NEMA 2000.